Local SEO is one of the best ways to grow any small to medium sized business or if you're a freelancer. I personally used it to grow several six figure businesses of my own strictly through local SEO being the main way we would drive traffic and leads. And if you're a small business or freelancer, it's one of the best ways to start growing organically without having to do outreach or invest a ton into paid ads. It's always good to do those things, but local SEO is an amazing long term strategy. And in this video, I'll essentially teach you all the basics and fundamentals of local SEO so you can get started doing this for your business or even doing it as a service for other companies. And now this is some of the things we'll be going over, an introduction to local SEO, we'll get into Google My Business, backlinks, citations, creating content, doing keyword research. We'll cover literally everything that you have to know about local SEO in this video. So this is kind of a high level overview of what we'll be talking about today. And now to jump right into it, local SEO essentially is the process and strategy of optimizing your content and your website and just your online assets in general for local search engine results and searches in general. So you wanna be thinking about if you service a local area like your city, maybe specific neighborhoods and areas, you can be popping up on Google and social media when people look up your kind of service in their area. And the beauty of this, and we'll talk a little bit more about it in the keyword section, is that typically when people are looking up a service in their area, it has really good buying intent and a high conversion rate because they're looking up that exact area, that exact service, so there, there's that buying intent behind what they're looking for and they're much more likely to actually buy from you. And again, this enables small to medium sized companies or freelancers to get good quality and traffic or good quality traffic and leads coming to them organically uh, without having to spend on advertising. And personally, I think it's one of the best ways to actually grow a service business and it's really underrated. Um, a lot of companies still neglect it, but it's a really easy win that you can start doing and it compounds and it gets better over time. Now, some of the pillars of local SEO, one is the keyword research and optimization. So you're gonna get increased visibility for very specific keywords and search terms that people are looking up. And when your ideal customers find you, they're much more likely to reach out and convert. You also have your Google My Business listing, which is a huge asset for a local business. And I'll be teaching you how to set this up and optimize it. And then citations and local links. So this is actually getting links from other websites and directories that points to your website, making it more authoritative, but also getting you some leads and referral traffic that way. Now, why should you be doing local SEO? The biggest thing is just the online visibility. Google and these search engines are huge. You can have tons of traffic and leads coming to you that are highly qualified and they're really interested in learning about how they can work with your business. Also, 85% of consumers look at online reviews and just do online research before reaching out to a local business or store. So if you can align with that and get that visibility, you're gonna get really good customers coming to you all the time. And then again, high conversion rates. 78% of local mobile searches usually result in an offline purchase within 24 hours. It's amazing. The conversion rate on these keywords and the strategy is really, really high. Again, if you're some kind of service business, doesn't matter if you're a realtor, you're a lawyer, you do copywriting, web design, I think you'd be crazy not to do local SEO. And it's not that hard, honestly, to set up once you know what you're doing. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is your Google My Business listing. You can actually sign up for this uh, for free and get a Google listing in your local area. Here's an example of a contracting company um, in a local town. So this is what pops up. You see some photos, their name, reviews, their location their hours, phone number, website, things like that. And again, this is free, you can sign up. They'll verify your address by sending you a code in the mail and then you're good to go and you're on Google just like that. You can start adding photos, getting reviews from your customers and you wanna optimize it um, for specific service keywords, the individual services that you do. You wanna make sure that you have all the up-to-date information and that's why next I just wanna talk about some best practices. One being choosing the right category for your business because then Google will prioritize it and rank you accordingly, and then customers can find you in the, the best possible way. High quality photos, whether you're doing a physical service, you sell products, make sure that you're uploading photos on a regular basis that gives people insights um, and an accurate understanding of what you do, especially if it's something like renovating those kind of things. People wanna see your work, right? So if you show something, even if it's just maybe your team, yourself, your location, just show something on there and it helps a lot. And then maintaining up-to-date information. Make sure that your phone number is correct, your website link, your hours, everything's as accurate as possible. Again, so just the customer has a better experience in finding you and interacting with your business. And then adding keywords to the profile and the business title is really, really important. Now keep in mind, you'll see right here, it says Fruitman Law Professional Corporation. Try not to stuff keywords in this title. It has to be your business name or else you can actually get reported and it, it can actually get taken down. So make sure that the uh, company name is exact unless you include a keyword in your company name already, then that just kind of helps out. But throughout the profile in the description and everywhere you can, 
make sure to add keywords that are related to your service. So, you know, copywriter, web designer, real estate uh, agent, professional or a personal injury lawyer, make sure you're including those keywords and also the uh, regions and cities that you service and then you'll pop up higher for those keywords. And before we move on to the rest of the video, I want to thank today's sponsor, Vendosta. They are an all-in-one software platform for agencies and marketers that service local businesses. And with Vendosta, you're equipped with all the tools you need to market, sell, build, and fulfill solutions for your clients. Give your clients a white label app filled with essential solutions every local business needs, including a CRM, social media management, local SEO, and reputation management. Meanwhile, their automated reporting tool gives your clients peace of mind about the return on investment, while your agency bills them a monthly subscription that gets deposited right into your bank account. Then you can even meet more customer needs with their extensive marketplace to build tailored packages for your clients, featuring best of breed products from companies like Google and Meta. You can get started with a 14 day free trial in the description. Okay, local keywords. So now. I recommend using something like Ahrefs, SEMrush, or Google Keyword Planner, completely free. And this is how you'll find these local keywords and search terms. And now typically, it is the service plus the area. Again, think New York copywriter, New York real estate agent, New York web designer. It's gonna be that city you service in, and then the service itself. And you can also look at competitors, look at competing businesses um, on Google, see how they do their keyword optimization, what keywords they use, where they place them on the page, and then you wanna make sure that you have location specific terms. So maybe if there's certain things going on in your city or maybe certain slang and things that people use, use that on the page because then people connect with it a lot more, they can relate to it. And again, they'll just have a better experience and be more likely to reach out. Keyword planner from Google is completely free. You'll probably wanna start there. You can type in something like New York copywriter. It'll give you data on how often that's searched every month. It'll give you more suggestions and ideas. And then you can incorporate those on your pages and your Google listing. Now, where you actually wanna put the keywords once you have them, one is in the meta description. I like using WordPress and the Yoast SEO plugin so I can edit it very easily. And then the meta description is just that little piece of text that's below the search engine result itself. And here, pretty much, you just explain what the page is about, but it's good to put in the keyword because it increases the click-through rate. And now, long-tail keywords, you know, if you're doing local SEO, really, it's all long-tail keywords because a long-tail keyword is one that's more specific and precise. For example, it'd be really difficult to rank for web designer, but it might be a little bit easier if you did Dayton, Ohio web designer. It's very specific, it's a long tail, it's longer, and it's easier to rank for. Now, something we'll touch on too is something called schema markup. We'll get a bit more into it, but this is a bit more technical. Um, it lets you get rich snippets and improve your click-through rate on the SERPs. And then additional places where you wanna put your keywords, the page title itself or the H1, header tags in the page like H2, H3, Think of those kind of headers and titles that are on the page that get smaller and smaller and kind of organize your content. You wanna put the, the keywords in there. The alt text of images, um, this is for people that have a uh, visual or reading disability, it kind of reads it out for them. Or if it, the image breaks and doesn't display, the keyword will be there. Media file names, when you're uploading images, videos, things of that nature, include the keyword um, in the actual file name if possible. And then of course, naturally just in the body of the content and the articles and things you write, Put your keywords in there, of course, naturally. Make sure you don't stuff them. Don't just like force them in there. Make sure it's natural and something that Google can just you know understand, but it's not forced. And now something also is building local backlinks or citations. So a backlink is when one website points to yours. That is a link, right? And it's really simple, but what it actually tells Google is that you're a good resource, you're trustworthy, you're credible, and so another website is linking to you. And it's a really big part of search engine optimization. And there's a lot of different ways you can get links. You can sign up for directories, you can reach out to other websites and contribute an article to them. You can get into local uh, directories and I'll be showing you those as well. So just be thinking about how you can get links from other websites and then that gets you more authority for your website but also gets you good traffic and leads coming your way. Okay, now online reviews and your reputation management does play a big role in local SEO as well because when people see that you have testimonials, case studies, reviews, it's what we call social proof. They'll be more than likely to trust you and reach out to you and it's actually proven that north of 90% of consumers, and we all do this, we look up reviews before we buy something. Even if it's on Amazon or wherever you go, typically you read the reviews first just to make sure you're getting a good product. And so make sure that when you have reviews, you respond to them, post them on social media, show them off. Like they're a really good piece of content and social proof. But if you do get negative feedback, that's okay, that's business, but respond to it professionally, respond to it positively. So even if someone sees that, 
they can see that you're being professional about it. And that says a lot about your brand. There are tools you can use as well, like Yanx to BirdEye. I believe there's Buffer, maybe BuzzSumo. One of those also helps you manage kind of like your online reputation. You don't have to do that right away if you don't want to. You can kind of just manage it manually at first. And then if you do want to reinvest in your SEO, you can use a tool to monitor your online brand and performance. Social media, though, too, plays a big role in local SEO and just your local business. You want to make sure you have accounts on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. Even if you don't use them all really actively, at least you have a link on them. Your brand is there and people can find you. But even when you're doing social media marketing, one, have localized content. So talk about your local area, your local service, make it localized to that actual region that you serve. And then there's geotargeting where you can actually tag posts that are relevant to your local area. You can tag the exact location. And then when people are looking that up, they're more likely to find you. And then uh, UGC or user generated content is really powerful just in every way. It's a good piece of content, it's social proof. And this essentially is content that your customer gives you. It's user generated. And then you can share that on social media, your website, your email, everywhere. And it's really good though for social media because people can see that, okay, they got a testimonial or some kind of you know, customer showing off the product or service and they're happy. And again, they'll be more likely to kind of reach out and, and buy from you. Mobile optimization as well is, is really important for local SEO and SEO in general. More people and actually a majority of people are searching from their, their phones nowadays. So things like uh, Google My Business, that's optimized right by Google, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you have a website, if it's on WordPress, Wix, Weebly, uh, Squarespace, make sure that you're previewing it on a mobile device and that everything lines up and looks nice and it feels good because if people come to your website, they can really want to use your service. But if the website kind of breaks and it's not really good on mobile, they'll just leave and go to a competitor. So make sure that you're understanding how to optimize for mobile devices. Google actually has a tool that will measure and essentially index your website as a mobile version, and it'll tell you what's wrong with it and what you can improve. I'll put a link in the description for that, but this is something you really want to think about because most people are searching from their phone, and if they're looking for your business, then they're gonna be a lot more likely to actually contact you if they have a good user experience on the website. Again, things like your Google listing and those kind of websites that are made from Google, Yelp, and those different websites, they're gonna be optimized right out of the gate so you don't have to worry about it. This is primarily though for your own website, which you should have. Okay, I mentioned schema markup. This is a bit more technical, but it is something you want. If you've ever been on Google, like you can see here on the right, sometimes the search engine result, it won't just have like the title and the URL, it'll actually have like reviews, the pricing, some additional information. That's schema markup. It's code you can put on your website that Google picks up and then it displays more information in the results page. And as a local business, you wanna make sure you have the right schema markup. There's local business markup you can put on your website. You can do your about page, your contact page. You can do reviews and products, things like that. I'll put a link to, to the official schema markup so you can learn more about it. And this is a bit more technical. So me being on WordPress all the time, I just use a schema markup plugin that essentially automatically does it saves hours of time and helps with your SEO and your click-through rate and the leads you get. So not something that you have to urgently do if you're not too technical, but make sure it is on your radar and it's something you eventually do because it does help a lot with your SEO. Okay, so I mentioned citations. These are essentially directories and links you can get pretty much completely for free. This gets you more visibility. It can generate traffic, leads. It's good backlinks to your website. And here's just you know the top 50 citations in the US so Google My Business, Apple Maps, Facebook, Foursquare, Bing Places, Yelp, and so on. So you can go through every single one, take the time to sign up, make sure that your, um, your name, your address, your phone number, all that is consistent and up to date on them. And again, you get links, you get local traffic, and it's really good for your SEO, and it's free and a really easy win. Creating content is probably one of the most important parts as well when it comes to SEO in general, but especially if you're a local business. Um, here's just an example on the right side of a blog that's about renovating, um, it's for landlords, property managers, and they're a local contracting company. So on their blog, they produce content that's around their province in Canada, their city and the places they serve, and that gives value to people that come to the blog, come to the website, they learn, they get value, you solve their problems and pain points, and then you can have a call to action inside that content to maybe call you, schedule a consultation. And again, just like with the keyword research we did, you can look up keywords related to topics in your industry and then make blog posts around those. Um, you can post these on LinkedIn if you wanted to. Medium.com is free. I recommend that you have your own website and I love WordPress, I always suggest that. But whatever you use, make sure that you're blogging, you're getting content up there. And then you can share that to your email list if you have one. You can share that on social media and just kind of repurpose it everywhere. But again, you wanna build that content up on your website um, or wherever you post it. 
just to kind of build up that trust with your audience. You get more SEO traffic and authority. And then of course, you're gonna get customers out of that over the long term as well. Now, something also that's a bit more technical, you definitely wanna keep on your radar is doing technical audits and evaluations. There's a tool called Screaming Frog, which has a free version you can try out. This will essentially analyze all the metadata and technical parts of your website and tell you where to improve, uh, what's all right and what's actually performing good. But you can use this along with GT Metrics. Uh, Google has some free tools as well. And you can just get like a really good high level or actually like really deep overview of what's going on with your website technically. And then you can hand this off to maybe another SEO expert. You can hand it off to a developer or if you're you know, a self-starter, you can actually learn this skill yourself, which is really handy. Um, there's also other things like Google Search Console, which is completely free. You hook up your website, it gives you tons of data um, and analytics about what's going on, on your website, and then you can improve that further. Okay, now when it comes to monitoring just your local search performance in general, I mentioned Google Search Console. Uh, make sure you sign up for that and you connect your website, completely free. Um, helps with indexing your pages faster and giving you insights. Google Analytics, free as well, hook that up to your website, gives you everything about who's on your website, how they're interacting with it, and then you can use that also to improve your content and your SEO. And then I mentioned Screaming Frog, there is that as well and other tools you can pick up and invest in that just give you a really nice overview of what's going on technically with your website, and then whether you wanna do that yourself and fix it or hand it off to an expert, you can go about either way. And then competitive analysis is always good just in marketing in general. You wanna look at your competitors and see what they're doing with their content, their copywriting, their advertising, their SEO, and kind of reverse engineer it, and then use that to you know, better your own strategy. Or you can see where they're getting backlinks from and then get links there as well. Um, I mentioned SEMrush, Ahrefs. You can do it manually as well. Just pull up some competitors and take notes on their website and their social media, see what they're doing, and then use that to kind of form your own strategy. But you can also go through the, re uh, the reviews they have on Google, Facebook, and mine those reviews for data and see what they're doing right, see what they're doing wrong, and again, use that to influence your strategy and what you're doing on Google. And that's essentially local SEO in a nutshell from setting up your Google listing, getting citations, creating content. If you have more questions about marketing or anything, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Let me know down in the comments. I also have some courses and things you can get in the description you should check out. Hope you're having an awesome weekend. I'll see you in the next video.